Welcome to Sections to Sheets. Sections to Sheets is a free Google Sheets add-on that separates rows by column sections and puts them in individual pages or sheets in a spreadsheet in preparation for exporting and printing. This might be helpful for you if you have some data just like I have here where I have a header and a footer and then I want to separate each one of these little sections here by this grouping column into their own individual sheet tabs while maintaining the header and footer. So if I go ahead and click submit now you can see now each one of these grouping sections has been split into its own sheet tab so we've got Jupiter, Mars, Mercury and Uranus. Sections to Sheets is easy to install all you need to do is go into extensions in Google Sheets then head over to the add-ons get add-ons and then type in sections to sheets It'll be the first one that comes up in the list and you can go ahead and click that. Next, all you need to do is hit install. Obviously I've installed already and I am good to go. Once it has installed, it will close this menu and then you'll be able to access sections of sheets from extensions and then down the bottom here, you'll be able to see it. Now during that process, you'll have to go through an authorization process. I'll speak about this a little bit later if you're more interested in seeing what scopes and authorizations that are required to run this app, but I've tried to keep them as minimal as possible for your own personal security. So I'm not taking any information from you that I don't need just to run this app. To start off, you need to set up your data environment. And what I mean by this is that you should start off your range starting in this A1 column here. Now at the top, you can put in a header. It doesn't have to be a single row. It can be multiple rows for your header, but we'll identify those later. Then you'll have your data set beneath that. Now, of course, the header is optional. You do not need to have the header in there either. Another option is to have a footer in your data as well. It can be one or more rows and you should put that at the bottom of your data. Now it's important to understand that there should be no data below the footer range here. Otherwise that will be incorporated into the range and it could cause some confusion when we're processing this information. Now you can add extra pieces of data along the other columns, so long as they are above the final row of, of data that you have, and you can choose to incorporate them or reject them. Let's go ahead and create our first sections to sheets. So in this example, I just have data here. So no headers, no footers. I'm going to go into extensions, sections to sheets, and you'll see a sidebar window loading on the right hand side here. Next, I want to select the column that I want to separate into individual sheet tabs by. So for me, this is going to be this column C here. So I want everything by the planet. So column C, I've selected it. Now, do I have a header in here? Now, more often than not, you're going to have a header. So I've left this function available for you. But on the rare case, you don't have a header. You just want raw data in. Then you can click on no header. Now we can choose the range we want to start and end from. So we could say we want to start from column B. So that would uh, show all the data in column B and column C only. Or alternatively, we could start for the full range column A through to column C. Lastly, we can maintain row height. Now what this means is that we can maintain this row height here. So if we right click and uh, click on resize row, we can see that it's 50 pixels high. So Part of our processing in creating this new sheet and these new sheet tabs in it will allow us to maintain that road height. Now keep in mind this will increase the runtime. So uh, if you don't need it, don't select it. Okay, we've got everything we need. We're not going to maintain the road, road height in this first example. I'm just gonna go ahead and click submit. Okay, once everything is complete, we are going to click on our sections to sheets video and you can see now it's been titled by sections. So we know that it's one that's been separated by sections here. So I'm gonna click on that. And you can see now we've got Jupiter, Mars, Mercury, and Uranus. Jupiter, Mars, Mercury, and Uranus. And we've got each of the data points or each of the sections of data in each one of the items. And all the formatting has been maintained except for the rows here. So that's okay, we can always select that in future. Okay, so let's look at another example. Over to headers tab here. Going back into extensions, sections to sheets again.
And this time around, we want to select our column C yet again, and we want to include a header this time. So I'm just going to click up on this A1 here and hold shift down to C. Now, if I only just wanted these two headers or just this header or these last two headers to be displayed, I would only select those. So for our example, just uh, so you understand what's going on here, I'm going to grab A1 and B1. So I'm going to hold shift down and click on B1 here, and then I'm going to hit select. So under headers, select. Now I don't have any footers, so I'm not going to unselect that one. And this time around, we'll maintain the row height. Okay, and now I'm going to click submit. Now, depending on your on the amount of data that you have, this may take a considerable amount of time. So be mindful of how much data that you're trying to process with this free add-on. Okay, here we go. So as you can see now, our selection for our header was only A and B because that's the only two ranges that we selected. And that will be available in Jupiter, Mars, Mercury, and Uranus. Cool. Let's have a look at another quick example here. So we'll close again. Extensions, sections of sheets. A column is going to be C to sort by. And we want a header here. So we want to include the entire header here because we realized that last header, it looked a bit messy with that empty spot, didn't it? Okay, so we've included that entire range here. So I've just clicked on A1, hold shift down to C1, hit select. Now we've also got a footer here. So I'm going to deselect no footer now. And then I'm going to select from A19, hold shift down to C, what is it? C20. And you can see here, we've got a merged value as well. Have a look to see if this has been included or not. So now I'm going to hit select. And do we want to maintain the row height? Yes, we do. Let's hit submit. Okay, let's go and have a look at our newly created sheet. Awesome. So as you can see here, we've got our headers in place and our footers in place. The merge came across successfully and our row heights came across successfully in each one of these newly formed items. Let's have a look at another interesting example. Let's say we don't have a specific column that we can group by or grab a section by. So for example, we've got subjects here and we've got 101 and 101 and 101 here, but we want to separate them by this group here, this group here, this group here. Now I can't use column A because that's going to include all of these values here. And I can't use column B because there's an O1 here an O1 here, and an O1 here. So what I can do is create a hidden column over here, this column F here, and I've called sections. All I've done is use the join function, and I've joined by a dash, and then included A2 to B2, so these two values here. So I'll be accessing this as the section or the grouping column here. So let's go into our extensions again, sections to sheets, and this time around, we can see that our columns have extended out to column F here. Now, interestingly, column F is the column that we want to split by. So we're going to select column F here. We do indeed have a header. So I'm going to select A1, hold shift down to D1 only, and then hit select. There's no footer in this example. And this time around, the width of the selection is important. So I want to go from column A all the way through to column D only and stop. And here I want to maintain the row height, keep that in place, and then hit submit. Cool, we made it. So let's select the file and have a look at what we did. So as you can see, we have been split up by this 101-01, 101-02, 101-03, 102-01, 02-03, -02 and so on and so forth. So everything has been split by this splitting column F here. However, it's not being displayed in each of the sheet tabs, which is exactly what we're looking for. So here we've got subjects, class, name, and grade, but no column F on display. Okay, so that's it for our basic examples. Let's have a look at the scopes that we're using. These are the authorizations that Google require for me to run this program. Now, you can always review scopes by going to Extensions, Sections to Sheets, Resources, 
and this will provide a list of resources for you to review. Now here I've got the uh, scopes and authorization here and you can go ahead and click on that. And this will take you to the scopes and authorization page for the overall sections to sheets homepage. So what scopes are we going to use? The first one is see, edit, create, delete only the specific Google Drive folder that we use with the app. This means the add-on is going to create a new Google Sheet for you, just like these ones that we've created here. So we need permission to create them and put them in the file and folder. Where are these files and folders being held? No worries, let's go have a look. So for me, they're held in this tutorial folder and they happen to be in the same folder as the original Google Sheet that you drew this data from. Okay, let's head back to the instructions here. So I need that to create that and rename it and put it in that file location for you. So the next scope is a see and download all your Google Drive files. Okay, so this is a read only scope. Basically, this means it allows me to review your folder so I can see where the location of your original Google Sheet is and place the new file in that location. Next one is see, edit, create, delete all your Google Sheet spreadsheets. Basically, the app needs to do two things. First, it needs to be able to see the data that it's going to extract from your source Google Sheet. And then two, create and edit the new Google Sheet, adding in new sheet tabs as it goes with the data that is required for each of those sheet tabs. This is the scope that is required for the app to do that. Okay, so the next scope, display and run third-party web content in prompts and sidebars inside Google applications. So this one is required for us to create a sidebar and these, these dialog boxes here. So both the sidebar and the dialog box, uh, we need that scope to create that. Okay, next one, see your primary Google account email address. The add-on actually doesn't access your email address. This is a requirement of the Google Workspace Marketplace. So you'll see this, you'll see this scope in every single one of the Google Workspace Marketplace items there. The same is true for this one. See your personal info, including any personal uh, info you've made publicly available. Again, another requirement of the Google Workspace Marketplace add-ons. Okay, so what are the limitations of this add-on? First, it won't bring in formulas from your original source data. The reason why I've chosen not to do this is because when you move around your data sources, so if we had a, for our footers here, a sum total of these ranges here, and they had to be re-added in to each one of the section locations, like so, then that formula would have to be recalculated, and it might not be the calculation that you're looking for. Alternatively, you might be relying on other formulas and calculations within the Google Sheet, and it, by dragging across this data into a new Google Sheet, it's not going to be able to access those calculations. So we've chosen just to display the data and not the formulas here. And one limitation on an extremely large data set is that it may run out of time during the processing of your data. And this is because there are quota limits set for you. So you have a script runtime of six minutes for execution for your Google Workspace accounts. Uh, you can see here, if it exceeds those accounts, it's going to run out of time. So two possible workarounds for this might be to not select the maintain row height because that will chew up some time in your processing. Or another workaround might be to split your data into multiple sheet tabs and then run those separately. It's a little bit extra work, but it's still going to save you a lot more time using this add-on. Another possible limitation for this add-on is that it automatically reviews where your source data is. So it's always going to start in this A1 location and go all the way down to the bottom of the last bit of data here. Uh, there's no way for you to select your data range here and then have, for example, header range on this tab and a footer range on this tab here. So everything needs to be one after the other in consecutive order. But that's basically it. I found it incredibly useful in my consultation work and uh, before I was a consultant in education. And it seems like 6,000 plus other users have found it useful too. Go ahead, give sections to Sheets a go. If you enjoyed working with it, please leave me a review. Remember, it's a free product. And if you wanted to give to my charity, Electronic Frontiers Foundation, I'd really appreciate it. And of course, if you have any feedback or if you find any errors in the code, uh, go ahead and click on the troubleshooting feedback and send me a note so I can make a change for you. This is a labor of love for me, so I hope you enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed making it for you. Until next time.